everybody. I want to welcome you all to another episode of Let's Talk with Ro. I know you guys could be anywhere tonight, so thanks for stopping by. You know I don't waste any time hopping right on in. Everybody, I want to First of all, I want to thank I want to thank you all for coming on tonight. I know you guys have a million places y'all can be, and I heard y'all are the bosses in town. Thank you for having us. It was our oh, pleasure. Thank you. No, absolutely. Look, when you reach back for a little dog like me, you know, I can't do nothing but to sit down and catch some crumbs. Yeah, there you go. So, you know, you guys, tonight I am going to let my guests introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about who they are and what they're doing. So, Tub, give us a little bit. I'm Tub, um, founder, CEO of R&D Investments. Hop on helping our people out now. Tub stands for two unique black brothers. Um, that's me. All right. So, Tom, tell us a little bit about yourself. My name's Tone Hustle, the swag, the bag, and the muscle. Um, I'm the CEO of my own company. I have an eviction company called EMG Solutions, um, LLC. We do bulk trash. We do evictions. We do moving jobs. We do junk removal. We do pretty much, if you have a problem, we have a solution. That's our saying. Um, I'm also one part of the investment team that owns the All Black Shopping Center on 2323 Shadyside Avenue. And um, we have a, a very serious initiative we're trying to share with y'all tonight. And that's my co-host to our, to our podcast. <laughs> well, look, he done, look, he done the mic right on yeah, over. Yeah, he kind of sort of introduced me, but my name is King Shan. I'm the business development specialist for Hop One. So it's my job to get the businesses in there. I'm also CEO of Pucker Up Bitch, which is my own lipstick line. And I am the hostess of Hop One's podcast, along with Tone. Oh, well, that's good to know mm -hmm. because I like a good look. I like a look, good lip okay, piece. Okay, me too. Who don't? <laughs> so, ladies, y'all make sure y'all tap in right there. Okay, but I will say we're going to hop right on in because it is a wealth of information that we want to get out to you guys about what this group is coming together to do. So, kicking it off to, I'd like to know a little bit about the story behind all of this. Everybody sees the Black Wall Street heading. Mm -hmm. And you know, everybody been inboxing me asking me what is going on. They like this is gonna be a big one, bro. And <laughs> I said, we, it is. It's gonna be big. Um, Black Wall Street. Um, you know, I'm old enough to understand what happened. Um, I came home. I'm speeded up. I came home from prison with an idea, and um, that was to um, start off. I bought a 12 unit apartment building to uh, house ex offenders like myself because we didn't. You know, when you return a citizen. It's hard to come to PG um, once you get locked up. You know, gotta go to Southern Maryland. So um, I bought a 12 unit building to open up a transitional home at that time. Um, so being in prison, when they come and speak to you, they don't have a solution. They come and talk to you and tell you, encourage you to come home and be a good stand, you know, a great citizen. But that wasn't for me. You know, I'm like, well, I come home, what you gonna give me? So me coming home, that was that was my thing of saying, now I need to create jobs. I need to create housing for the community. I sold a 12 unit apartment, had a chance to uh, buy the shopping center, the first shopping center we bought, bought it. Um, and then I just said, OK, now I can I own it. It's leverage. If you don't own nothing, you can't do nothing. So that was leverage for me. And I'm like, okay, now that's, that's OK. I, I want to dip in right there, because a lot of times, you know, a lot of viewers are renting. Right. I'm going to be straight. You know what I mean? And when you're talking about you don't have any leverage, right. you know, if you don't own, could you give us just a little piece on that? Definitely. I mean, you know, in a sense of, you know, again, let's take a salon. I'm going to use a salon. Okay. When you're going there, you own the salon, but you just own the name, right? You don't own the brick and mortar, right? So you have no leverage, right? So you got to go in the space. You got to fix it up. You got to pay two, three months security deposit. You can get put out when you want. You know, they can put you out, move around how they want to move around. And then now you got marketing. You got to remember, you need the marketing strategy to, to, to you know, to get your business going. How can you do that with a 6000 overhead, 4000 How can you do that, right? Yeah. Now, owning a business, you're your own landlord, right? So every business at the shopping center, we own it, right? So now we can control our people. We can control what we charge, right, so we can help our people out. That's what Hop On is about, helping our people out now. So if you came into my shopping center or our shopping center, rather, and, and want a space, we can say, okay, bro, give us $500 for the first year. We can, we can cap it, and then, you know, we can elevate it as we go. I don't know. You got me ready to pull up right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
but that's excellent you know what you're doing and you know a lot of people are looking at the flyer and things like that and they see black wall street a lot of people don't know they don't even know what black and just coming from the audience you guys just drop it in the comments how many of you guys know what black wall street is right and does anybody here know anything about the original piece with the black wall street absolutely we all do yeah well tony you want to tell us a little bit about that all right sure so 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 black wall street was um literally a community it was in oklahoma and it was a community of just all black people they had their own banks they had their own libraries they had their own doctors lawyers physicians everything it was literally our own community and uh what happened was that structure became too powerful for the white people to see they just didn't want to see it anymore and um it's a song that's associated with that with that uh really that. yeah it's um and i forget exactly what it was i think it was like uh bombs over something but they they they, they the, the, the song. hey y'all help us out if anybody knows what that song is that's connected with the um yeah tap in give us the, give us the actual songs bombs over baghdad bombs over baghdad by outcast okay queen bring it and um that that song they end up so they the the the, the people in the white community and actually ended up bombing that whole community and completely wiping it out and since that's been done we have not been able to tap into those same resources that we've as a people we haven't reached that platform again so what we're trying to do is extremely comparable to exactly what that is we understand the dangers and the risk involved with it and we just are extremely passionate about what we're doing okay and, and to piggyback off of what tom was saying it's not only oklahoma it was multiple black wall streets in multiple states some was blown up some was sunk are it's yeah. literally man-made lakes with whole towns underneath right that was once black wall street wow. so you really have to die further in. it's not just it didn't only happen in one location wow we was we was there in multiple states at one point but they one by one plucked us all off so which I'll, is what rosewood is about to yeah and that's exactly that what we're trying to do we don't want to just tap into our own market we have plans to expand everything that we do all the businesses that we are pulling in a, a, a business that we can see in other markets in other areas and that's exactly what we want to do we don't want to just thrive in the community that we in we want to start right here we want to put a foothold right here we want to have a proof of concept right here but we want to take this everywhere wow okay you guys give me one second because we need to go to the audience and get some shout outs reverend dr nancy lee we see you mama lee it's good to have you on the show tonight we are gonna hold it down we have kevin thanks for stopping by this evening DJ Tone, <laughs> he said, I'm watching from the Mike Brooks comedy show. That's what's <laughs> up. <laughs> Hold it down. Uh, Danny, Mandel, Trina, thank you all for tuning in. And if I missed you, don't look, don't take it personal. Y'all know we got a lot to get out this evening. Now, you guys, I know that you guys actually have a name for what you're doing. You know, tell us more about the name affiliated with everything that's going on. Okay, so uh, our organization, well, our initiative and our group is called Hop On, which stands for helping our people out now. And so our goal is to create generational wealth and to keep the dollar within the black community by providing the proper tools and resources that you would need to make sure that your business is successful. Financial literacy, business bank accounts, business loan, business credit, um, your license any and everything that you would need, including customer service classes, anything you would need to be successful, whether you get placed in our shopping center or whether you would like to go somewhere else, is it's up to you. We're not here to steal your business. We're just here to make sure that we teach black people financial literacy so they can know the difference between being rich versus wealthy. Right. OK, now that's good right there. You know, you guys, we need this. There are people I know um, people that are 80 years old that have never owned anything you know what i mean and it's really sad and a lot of people feel as though they don't have the opportunity and it's not like the people aren't working these people are working from top of the morning until late at night and for some reason they are not becoming wealthy it's because of the way that they uh the structure is in, in, in the school systems and they don't teach us about credit scores they don't teach us about how to leverage properties and leverage your money correctly it's stuff that uh people learn in the in, a, in other i'm gonna say the other communities that is helping those people 
at a young age get much further along in life than what we're able to do in our community. So we're teaching our kids a different way. We hoping our kids are able to teach their kids a different way. And we teaching other business owners like us because we've ran into so many issues, every, every one of us, so many issues trying to start our own businesses and, and flourish out here in this hard community, a pandemic, everything going on. So that's why we want to pass on as much as the information that we already have to make it easier for the next person. Look, we got people in the comments. Sam says, sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> Sam says, sign me up. Yeah, so, Sam, you know, you, you guys do make a good point, though. You know, when you think about even myself thinking about coming up, I don't recall having conversations about credit. Yeah, they, they not, don't they talk about it in my house. Wait, you're, you're not going to have that conversation because it, it's the toxic to your family. So when you talk about boy jeans and and how long, you know, you got to remember four or five hundred years ago, you got to go back. Right? You got to come now where we at now. Black Wall Street and all over was one of them platforms that we had. But most most people got killed and they was afraid. Mm -hmm. So from that point, from that point on, it was silence. So no one else, no one else was scared to come out to, to teach this. So when they put in their school, they started taking it out. Right. Because they saying, OK, they learn it too much. This was always the same, right? It was learning too much. What happened was when you go back and um, when desegregation hit, that was bad for us because we feel obligated to want to spend money with the white owners. You know what I'm saying? So you got to remember Fasashi, that's the last name. Royal Farms, that's the last name. Wells Fargo, that's the last name. Fasashi, that's the last name. I can name all these multiple businesses and that's the last name. Who's getting wealthy? Mm -hmm. That family. That family, which is not us. So we continue to get them rich. Right. But then you 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 you, you have a Tom Hustle, you have a Robinson, you got all these last names, but we're not supporting them. And so, those business don't do nothing for, for our us, community. Nothing. Right? They don't give us nothing back. The, the the millions and billions of dollars that they can accumulate in a year, they don't. The things that they give us are trinkets is 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 it's absolutely nothing compared to what we would like to do for our community. And the, the most thing that we can give our community is the information. The information is the most powerful thing. Teach a man how to fish. He know how to, he's going to be able to feed his family forever. Give a man a dollar, he can feed his family for today. And that's what they've been giving us. They've been giving us the dollar, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. just, just give you a job. It's, I, trained. it's, yeah, trained. it's, it's, it's a train. It's a different They it's already different trained our mind back in the day. They already trained us to, to be the way we need to be. Everybody look at society in this world just like it is. You need to think outside the box. So I always teach the team is don't live in the moment. Live outside the moment. And when you live in a moment, you just living for today. When you're living outside the moment, you got to think five years from down the road, what it looks like for you. You know, when you plan around, what does it look five years? So I always ask a person, what's your one or three year goal? Give me your short term goal. Most of these people are not gonna give you that because mm -hmm. they're not even thinking about that, you know. So that's where we come into play. Our team, you know, Jeremiah, Tone, Harold, Pierre, all the team, Doug, that's what we're here for, to give you the information. Oh yeah, the team's strong team very strong and that's what it's about as a team again that's why i tell you there's no boss we all are bosses you know and and, and the votes at our table that what wins the votes right but well, we play rock paper scissors you know Literally. like keep you in it we play rock paper scissors because everybody got to trust someone right so at the end of the day if it's 10 of us why all 10 how did all 10 come together see when god give you something you got to be able to listen and you got to run with it and be obedient and listen to what he said right so all these people here because because of me right he loved me she loved me he loved me you know dion all these people love me right so they don't know each other without me right so now that's how we impact in the community by where i started from to where i'm at just been a good person did my thing always been stood up stand up in the community you know growing up in the hood always had a, a great name behind it so what that happens is i got to show it as well so that's the thing i showed it and i'm doing it so it's easy for me to buy something and say come on bro you don't gotta put no money up come on let's expand this and that's what that's how it started so now they making money right i'm gonna give you a taste of it right so if it's a million dollars on the table i'm gonna tell you to take two i'm gonna take 50. you know and that's how we really run our business like i, I taste the money i know what it looks like so i'm not chasing money i'm chasing business that's how we expand we expand through the business not through the business relationship like with yourself you know what I'm saying? That's how that works for us. Not with the money. If you chase money, you don't have no type of goal or no dream. You know, so that's for us. Black Wall Street is everything. 
Like we are passionate about it. We know that we can lose our life. We know it, but we nonstop with it. You know, every day we're looking for land. Every day we look for it. We out there in the streets, we're doing it, we're gonna buy it. You know, we, we, everybody we're dealing with in our circle is black. You know, black architects, learn set, boundary surveyors, everything. Uh, engineers, every everybody we use is black. And not that we have something against the other ethnic but they already eat and they're eating off us. So that's why we're building these structures. We are buying the land and building the structure so that we can be in charge of our people and our people can be in charge of themselves. That's what it's about for us, making sure that our kids are be are able to function without us, right? It's generational wealth. That's what we want. That's and what we're we very choose. big on words like that is like keywords, buzzwords for us, generational wealth. And, you know, it's, I call it a buzzword because there's a lot of people out here saying it now, but it's not a lot of people that actually knows how to put the structure in place to get to that point. And that's the difference between being able to say the word, understanding what it is, and actually being able to put it to bring it to fruition. Rather. Okay, I'm going to speak to that generational wealth thing. So what I do see sometimes is that you have people that will inherit things, things that their parents have left behind and things like that. And let's say it's just split up amongst the siblings, right? You know, do you think that it's important to show people what to do when they <laughs> inherit things? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm gonna go from a man perspective. That's something in the Bible they speak about. We have to teach these things, right? So we have to understand, I can give you a dollar, but if you never had a dollar before, what you think gonna happen? Right. You're going to go ahead and do anything with it. Right. So in our house, we have to teach and understand financial literacy. We really break it down to them. a lot of people that really don't understand financially. That's why we say, come to us. Let us show you. Let us show you how to budget your life, how to spend your money. Let us show you what bank to bank with. See, people just think going in the bank, you should bank with a bank. We're going to teach you why not to bank with these certain banks, you know, based on your business. Right. So based on your business, this bank would never support your business. But you don't know that. That's what we're here for. We're here to let you see why not bank with them. Why don't ever bank with them? Because your money not going to do. Don't let your money sit in the bank. Why let your money sit in the bank when you're not getting anything off of it? If you leave your money in the bank, you're probably losing $80, $70, $80 off $1,000 every day. Why do you think they want your money so fast? So they, that's why they're giving the money out so fast, because they are making that money off of your money. So mm -hmm. certain banks is not good. So that's, again, we already, we already found 30 acres. Right. So we bought the do our feasibility study on the 30 acres, feasibility study on the 30 acres. And that's the platform that we're about to use to create everything, our schools, our grocery stores, our farms, our theaters, our communication. And like we want to want to be able to control our communication to our own people. We don't want Fox 5. We don't want them. That's not for us. Every we time want we road. We want road. <laughs> there we go. You know, so it's 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 very important that when, when we out there doing this and bringing it back there, the hardest part to me is what she has, right? Because she got to deal with these businesses every day. If you see her, her, uh, her portfolio of all these businesses, she got to deal with them hands on to get them done. Her, her, or she, but they got to get these people done. You know what I'm saying? You know, and that's awesome. Everything you're saying, I'm with it. I love it. You know, but it's easier said than done. When you are trying to pull the black communities, the black community together to do things like this, it seems like a lot of times that's who's biting against you at the same time. <laughs> so, you know, so how do you guys navigate through that and stay encouraged? Because I don't even have to ask. I know that you deal with a lot of lashback. You know what I mean? Like when you're talking to people that don't understand what you're saying and they sitting up there with a $5,000 outfit on, they going to take this kind of personal if you pull something <laughs> out. They looking kind of crazy. They got to do one or two things. They got to either stay where they at or get pissed off. Well, we speak on generational wealth so much, but at eight, in order for us to be able to get to the generational wealth, we got to be able to break some generational curses. Hello. And that's the stuff that we talk about also. As you said uh, earlier, you know, it's, it's when these people, uh, the, they have um, somebody die in their family and they get left a huge inheritance. They end up broke the next year because nobody really knows how to structure your money, how to 
use these insurance policies that the banks are using rather than the bank accounts and getting the different type of return on your money infinity banking like it's it's a lot of stuff that we can do and we can teach people that we're living on a day-to-day -day basis that the, it, it, like I said, it's not. It's people always think it's about the money. So you know, it, it's always cool for us to come on yeah. these <laughs> these yeah. podcasts and talk about the money because that's the most interesting and powerful yeah. thing. But truthfully, it's really much more about the information. That's what we want to give to people. The information we want to give you the opportunity and the information to be able to put yourself where you need to be at. And honestly, we don't get that much backlash from our people. I'm going to say so far, knock on wood, because so far, everybody has been great. Everybody has been receiving and everybody wants to know the information that we give. Them. So I, I maybe only one experience other than that, I haven't had no negativity getting vendors, going out to see vendors, hosting vendors uh, when they win and they move on to the next step, working with them. Very respectful. They just they want it. That's the thing. Well, it's we and out the people that want it and who don't want it. It's very easy for me by now to weed out who want it and who, who don't. You could tell. And the you thing is, tell very easily through their work ethic shows everything. Sorry. Okay, so you said you can weed them out. Mm -hmm. So when you say you can weed them out, you can tell who want it and who don't want it. If mm -hmm. you see somebody that wants it, what's some characteristics that you're looking for? Somebody that wants it is somebody that is actively posting every day promoting every day Seems like, like I, can't thing, pro right? I can't promote i can't promote for you i have 60 plus vendors and amongst other things that's going on i promote for all of my vendors but the thing is i have to see it in your story i have to see it in your timeline not once a month every single day i want to see new product that you're doing promotion of your product i want to see how your labels are. If you came out to one vendor fair and we told you, okay, your presentation could do a little bit better, are you going to come out to the next one and show us that you worked on it or you just going to wait around and think we're going to come for you? No, we're not. Okay. It's, it's stuff like that. Like you got to want it only because Hop On is offering so much assistance. You know, not only are we taking people that already have the money to come in, but we're offering to build these businesses up. That means we coming out of our pocket to help the business. Why would we do that if you're not hungry enough or if we feel, OK, they won't even make these little small changes to sustain the storefront? Why right. would we, you know, you got to want it. You got it. That's you got to want it. I mean, this is just wonderful, y'all. The people going crazy over this. You know? <laughs> and when we talk about our people, what our people need to see is proof of concept. Yeah. If they don't see it actually working in real time in somebody's life, it's not real to them. Mm -hmm. So when you come out to our all black owned shopping center. And you see what's going on and you walk around to all the different stores and see what we build and see what we're in the process of, see what we finished, see our development going on in the back. Like it's a proof of concept. You see that we actually putting feet to pavement. We're doing what we say we're supposed to do. Yeah, and it's quite empowering just to even listen to it. When people come into a space like that and it's just our kind, and I like what you said to, you know, it's not that we hate any other ethnicity. It's just about what's wrong with loving ours. Mm -hmm. Nothing. It's yeah. nothing wrong with it. You know, we have uh, all black, I mean, not all black, but all oriental banks that we just not allowed to use. Hey, I'm going to tell y'all something funny that somebody said a couple of weeks ago to me. And, you know, it sat me back and I had to think about it. How many times do you see Asian people at the gas station? I said that. Oh, my God. You never. 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 I I the only. <laughs> at least not in PG County. Yeah, y'all. When a person said that to me, I said never i was i i look i shook my head and i was like i'm gonna have an answer i'm gonna and say I something else to you that's gonna make you think also okay how many times do you walk into a uh oriental town and as soon as you walk into their neighborhood you know exactly where you at you feel their footprint you feel they imprint on their community they have all their structures up and they chinese letters and you you, you feel what they have going on you in chinatown we don't have that that's what we want to bring back to our community we want you to come into our shopping centers and, 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 and feel what black excellence feels like. I know everything you think about with us when it's ours and it's coming together is the ghetto. Yeah. <laughs> right. And you know, like, for real, That's you, the, think, that, about you it. think about it. It's bad service with black people. They never treat you good. They talk to you any kind of way. They don't want to be at work. 
you want to change those narratives yes and it's just a good thing you know for you guys to be talking about bringing this thing together and for it to look wonderful you know a lot of things that we have we tear down mm -hmm. you know what kind of plans do you guys have in place to make this last so that people are not coming in and just being able to destruct what we what you guys are building Look, I included myself already. I said what well, we had. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's really about showing them. You said it right, though. Yeah, it's, it's, listen, it's what well, we had. It's really about just showing them that we love and care for them, right? You got to understand, you can go 4th of July. This thing about 4th of July. When you go, as you say, the hoods, right? How does it look out there? They done left all the fireworks out there. They, they You can't even drive up or down the street, right? They're not understanding. All they're doing is continue to cut their own legs from under them. So every, every time you do that, the land goes down, right? The value goes down in your community, right? So when the value goes down in your community, what you think is about to happen in the next five years? Maybe 10, right? Now, that one white person is going to buy a house on the block. And then you're going to wonder why that house now is worth 500 when I couldn't even get 84. What we're doing is killing ourselves by us showing them again. That's why they throw it in our face. One white person can change the demographics of a neighborhood. Hmm. We go in the neighborhood and buy. Why does everything plump? Why it goes down? Right? Why the value goes down? Right? Because we bring our value down. Right? Mm -hmm. So then you wonder why the white people walk up there with their head up like they are better than us. Right? Because you know why? We ain't protesting. We ain't writing no letters. We all we do is talk. We all talk. Right? No show. You you 20 hours on Facebook talking about nothing. You're not even minding your business. Right? You're not even minding your kids. And then you wonder why these, this situation is the way it is, right? Who came up with time out? Who said put your kids in the corner? Mm. Who said that, right? Mm. All that is now, just think about how this thing works with us. At one time, we beat out, they beat us, right? Then they gave the kids, say, if your mother beat you or your father beat you, call this number. They're going to go to jail. They telling them that, right? Now, if, if, if you beat them, they call. Now, you're getting held accountable for the things that your kids do. Why is that? Think about it. See how they reversed it. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Now you're going to go to jail because you're not holding your kids accountable. See, they're trying to, again, take the masculine man out the house. They've been doing that in the 70s. They did that 69, 72, right? That's when they came up with the food stamps and the money and get them out the house. I'm going to give you the check. If you're going back to back in the day when, when World War One was old, what happens? It was alcoholism, right? They came home. They couldn't find no job. What the man was doing? They was traumatized. They, they just think men don't need, you know, help. So they traumatized. So they go on drinking. Now they go on drinking, frustrated, mad, can't find a job. Then the lady is going to continue to talk down to them or bad to them, right? Guess <coughs> what? Now they're in the street. Now, guess what's happening? No man is raising the kids. What happened after that? Drugs, crack hit, right? So even now, crack babies, mamas having crack babies, having crack. Nobody is raising each other. So with 2022, why are we in a situation? Crack babies. No one is raising no one. If you go back from the 80s and the 90s, just think about the era. By that time, what they 30, 40 now? Look at it. Look at the that's what happened. So no wonder they don't have no patience. No wonder they don't respect. The respect died in the 80s when the crack hit. They knew what they was doing. I'm just one of them babies that's back in the day that raised the same way and it's effective. Eight kids. I got eight kids and my, my kids respect. They don't smoke around me. They don't drink around me. You would never see my kids pick up a cigarette and I know they smoke. We can go on a field trip and they in the car smoke and they would say, Dad, can you pull over? Let me use the restroom. But they lying because they won't go around the, behind the store and smoke a cigarette. And I get it, but that's respect. You're not going to see my son turning up with me and I don't drink or smoke, but I'm just telling you, it's not going to never happen. My grandkids is not going to be that way. So we have to bring it back, bro, us. We have to bring this back in order for it to change. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So and, and and stop running to get their money. You know, every time something happened, all these people, we had this podcast, we talked about this before, how the white people give us the money, right? To run these different organizations, you know, stop the violence or whatever it is. Black right? Lives Matter. Black, all this money, right? <laughs> I don't care what you're doing. What I told the dude on the show, I said, listen, you can do all the great things you want with their money, but you got to remember, you ain't going but so far they don't want it to end they just want to show that they're doing something that's it all they want to do is show you that they're doing something so they're going to fund you so when they fund you they ain't going to let you accomplish it they're not going to let you do that nowhere right so guess what they still own you 
they still own you. So with us, we use our own money. So when the schools open, we use our own money. We create our own bylaws. We do all these things ourselves with our own funding. That's how we circulate the money to keep it, to call it Black Wall Street, because we got to circulate the money in our own neighborhood. At least let it stay in there three or four times. It's only standing there a few minutes. Wow. Do you think, you know, when I think about it, like I told you guys, I've been really studying Black Wall Street, and I'm going to be honest, watching it repetitively last week, getting ready for this show, you know, I learned a lot of things that I didn't know, you know, and when, when you search for knowledge, you will find it. Yes, you will. That's you know fine. what I mean? And, you know, when you called to us about the show, I was just like, okay, I got to figure this out. I got to get in here. And it really made me feel good. It just gave me encouragement. I feed, I'm feeding off of y'all tonight just to know that this is existing. Mm -hmm. Just to know it's existing, to be sitting with power, saying we're going to love our people. And this is what we're going to do in our community. And we can. And it will be successful. Now, you know, watching how, you know, they came in and they just came in and tore down everything that those people had built, our people built. Do you think that it's possible for that to happen to what you're trying to do here? It's so funny because we was leaving somewhere. King Shan said, let me ask you a question. She said, you think they're going to try to kill us? I said, sure. yeah. And that's something I always bring up in our group. Too. You, you got to just, you know. But I'd rather go home. I'd rather go home. You know, people, oh, God woke me up this morning. I'm in great now. Home is where I want to be. I want to go see that castle, right? So I'm just doing this work. I'm a temporary stay here. Everything that's going on, we are temporary. So when God uses us, we're using his leverage to pass his word out. So I'm telling you, whatever happens, it was meant to happen. This is not a mistake. All these people, Miss Dion, none of this is home. But it's not a mistake that we came together. None of us grew up together, right? I'm the oldest of the group. None of us grew up together, but we came together through God, right? So whatever God put on me, them people saw it in me, and they believe in me. They believe in everything I got going on because that's hard to do, right? This man got his own life. She got, his, you know, all the people that's with us got their own life, but they believe in what I'm doing, right? And when you believe in what you're doing, that ain't got nothing to do with me. That's all God because I ain't go to school for this. I ain't go to school for none of this I know, right? That's all God given. I'm telling you, I, if you really understood the story, which I won't go into. You would know it's God. I don't. I don't got that education. You know, I'm not. I'm not researching. I'm not doing that. I'm. I'm allowing God to continue to feed me what I need. So that's why I pray my prayers to listen, speak with His tongue, listen with His ears, and see with His eyes, and wow. everything is pure. Wow. And you know, when you talk right, when when I spoke with you right, I didn't know you from Adam. Right. I'm gonna go ahead, y'all. You know, they try and eat the humble pie on here, y'all. But let me tell y'all, these jokers got influence. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you when I was talking to you, right? I hadn't even met y'all face to face, right? And you know, this man is serious about what he's talking about. And I'm telling you because he reached back for little old me. And I'm talking to him, and you know, he's speaking. That's something that only God can do. Have y'all ever heard people talking? And they can have this national platform, they can have a global platform. And you like, I don't want to hear what they're talking about. It's no influence. What you have and what you bring in is influence. It is. It's something only God can give. People can have all the knowledge in the world, but if they don't have the pain and suffering that you went through to get the influence, it won't work. Amen. It won't work. So, you know, for real, man, you gonna need all the prayers you can get going forward in this project right here. You know what I mean? So it's just like I said, guys, it's just an interesting piece. Um, And so far with what you guys have done, what kind of businesses do you guys have under your wing? Okay, so uh, we have Popping potato. I love her. A, she comes to my salon. She she's drops a store stuff front off. winner. Oh she's a food God. truck winner. She's a her. retail shelf winner. We also have Black Dragon, which is Austin. So he is our Black Chinese food. Oh my God, amazing! General Mo's chicken, orange line chicken. You just got have it to believe it. But he's another storefront winner, food truck winner, vendor winner. We have about ten so far. Okay. Ranging from different things. We have our uh, Empress Home and Body, which is the face of our Black Bath and Body Works, because that's what we want. We have Beauty Supply Store. We already have Unique Looks, which is uh, our hair salon. And barbershop. And barbershop. And okay. we moving from there. Like we said, we want grocery stores. We want doctor's offices. We want hospitals. We want everything that 
I'm looking for everything that they have, but on a black scale. Yeah. Just as black good, top quality, yeah. everything. Don't come to me if your quality ain't top, because we ain't just taking anything because you black. Top quality. We ain't wavering on that. We want the same great experience that you would get going to go see them, but within our community. And that's it right there. Go ahead, Tony. I see you was itching to say something. Because I really was. Because we so passionate about what's going on. But that's what I was saying about the stores and the businesses that we tapping into and we bringing on our stores that, and businesses that we can see all over mm -hmm. the country. Period. Like, I Anybody know me, they know I cannot stand it. I can't stand the carry out. Yes, you don't. Yes, you don't. I don't care at all. I can be hungry, hungry, hungry. If they say we're going to the carry out, I'm going to just continue to be hungry. But who doesn't want to see a black dragon in the community? You can go to a black Chinese food store, and I'm going to use this word gentrification because they come into our communities and they change up everything and they move in. Guess what? Our buzzword is reverse gentrification. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to come in their community and sell them our products they way. Look, have you guys seen? Um, so I used to own a nail salon and I had all black nail techs. And you know, our competition, oh, yeah. they the Asians, right? They the lead in the, in the, in the they industry. are. You think nail techs, you can walk in there and those they are running around there. They will get your nails done in 15, 20 minutes and charge you 40 bucks. So, quick question for, for your business. Did y'all do feet also? You know what we did? Because I, I, I know a few black nail people that just won't do feet. You know? Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Listen, this <laughs> is like what you've been saying, Queen. Is where I am. I don't play with my staff. When you come in, you gotta be ready to work. Amen. Don't come in here right. knowing what we trying to do with some low quality work ethic. Mm -hmm. You understand? You gotta wear uniforms in my salons. Mm -hmm. You gotta look a certain way in my salons. You gotta speak a certain way in my salons. You got to come in here a, a certain way. I don't want you in here making us look bad. Mm. We are intelligent. We are successful. You are already a millionaire. Present yourself like that. You know what I mean? I like that. No, it's true, though. And that's how we roll. But when I would have my black nail techs, a lot of the times, I would have difficulties getting my nails done up in there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You just don't want to work. You're looking at the competition here. And if we want to gain certain things, it's not. It is. It is a competition to a degree. You have to look at what's available and what's out here. And like y'all said, seeing is believing. Mm -hmm. If you are sitting here and you a black nail tech, you can't be taking three hours on somebody's nails charging them $150 and you taking lunch in between that. Yes. Or on the phone. Or on the phone. Okay. That's Why the same with styles too. But I will say my nail tech is a black girl and she bomb.com. Let me tell you. Wonderful. I wouldn't go nowhere else, but I had went up in the Asians one day to get my feet done when she was not available. And they hate it. If I come in there and get my feet done and don't get my nails done, they want to know who did it, how much she charged, this, this, and this. They want to know what we got going on. The, 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 right. The thing is how they master us is this customer service, right? They are so patient, so calm, right? Mm -hmm. they, really lack, they don't really talk too much. They master the art of us. That's why we want to continue to go in there and, and support them. We don't want to go in a black community and support the black community and i'm not saying that it's all their fault or all our fault it's 50 50 in this right so for us again it's changing that so now we saying we know what the problem is right so now how do we change it and that's how we work so we know what we're never going to hang on a, a problem long we're going to say okay we know what it is how we change it. this right that's the thing it's like what they're doing now with all the sweets right you, who you think started the sweets them they still knew how to get us to separate us. All it is is to separate us. People not even understanding it. When you was growing up young, you, you you grew up in a small house, right? So you all had to interact. That's the most. Oh my God, that's more impactful than anything. Now the siblings got their own rooms, right? On phone, on TV. How often do they communicate with each other? Just think about it. If not, you texting in the other room. That's lack of communication, right? They are killing us. They are killing us softly. We're not even looking at even with technology. They're killing us softly with technology. How right? important do you think communication is? Oh, like this is it, it, it needs to be. We need to like they will tell you. I I, I hate text. I want to talk. I want to be in front of you and I want to speak. I don't want to talk no business over the phone, texting and doing all that. I understand what needs to be text and what needs to be emailed. 
But other than that, we need to talk. We need to, we need to resolve these issues by talking to each other, mm. listening mm. to each other, and hearing each other. <laughs> Lord. And that's on, and that's yeah, on darn, that's a sermon for the week. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> the man said, we need to talk. <laughs> we don't, you know, that pisses me off. Yes. It does. It, it pisses me off. Do you know how many people now are to the point where they are like, I don't like to talk? They yes, don't. it's working. What they are doing, the system, they doing it. The system, how they building the system, they are, it's working. We don't see it, though. We too naive. That's why I said don't live in the moment. Think outside the moment. You gotta think the, why these other countries three and five years ahead of us. Why? Why do you think we so slow? And we America and we slow, right? Right. In places five, six years ahead of what we doing. It's an iPhone 20 right now. What we on iPhone what? 12 probably? <laughs> yeah, and think we doing it. And think we doing excited. it, right? <laughs> you look, you be excited. You be like, girl. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's all it's just it's all the bands. Everybody riding around the bands. I ain't never seen bands come to the neighborhood and, and get back. Nothing. I ain't never seen bands come to the neighborhood. You won't catch us riding in them fancy cars. Right? Right now today, you're not gonna catch us riding the fancy cars. That ain't where our value is. We're gonna go spend thirty thousand on that land and we're gonna build it for eighty thousand. So we spent up a hundred and ten thousand to buy and build the house that's worth four hundred thousand. Now we can take eighty percent of the equity out and go buy two more. So what you do is you buy a house a year for your kids. So now you're not a 20% house owner. I hope your viewers know he's telling the difference between rich and wealthy right yes. now. Yeah, absolutely. And there is a difference. Look, guys, this is the difference between rich and wealthy. You know, that ownership piece. Yeah, it's, it is very interesting. And, you know, when we sit here, I can't, I can't skate past the communication piece. So, you know, in the barbershops, in the salons, that's what we do. That's where it happens. We do hair for the funerals, the weddings, every event you can think of. We're talking to the people. But do you know now, you know, in the location I work at most days, the young men that come past, I'm going to tell you what I see. My young men that come past, they have to pass me to go to the back to the barber. And they will come in and they, it's like the walk of shame when they got to <laughs> walk past everybody. Not all of them. But I see it. They are dreading what Miss mm -hmm. Rowe gonna I'm say. say that's right. <laughs> when they come in, you can tell they like, what's she gonna say mm -hmm. today? And when they come in, it's a rule in my shop. You know what I mean? Hey, what's up, Holly? I see you. It's a rule in my shop. You know, you can't come past me without opening your mouth. You can't come down this line without speaking. I tell the people that work there, we need to know who's here. Yes. We don't know what's going on. And now, you know, it is a normal thing for my youngest to come in. And they like, yeah, all right, what's up? They, <laughs> it is killing them to talk. That's and it. you know, it's the video games, it's these texting. Cause look, when they in my chair, right? If I'm doing their hair and stuff, I'm looking at their text. <laughs> I'm geeking. I'm, I'm a creep. I'm over their shoulder. And I'm like, no, he not, not saying all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said I know he's not saying all of that. I mean, he got a whole situation going on. I'm like, boy, you ain't say nothing to me. <laughs> Get off that phone. And I mean, they be saying all kind of stuff in these phones. Uh -huh. And I'm like, you not even having a conversation. I had a young man in the shop last week, and I was asking him how he wanted his hair, and his mother was answering me from the waiting area. And I had, you know, I, I don't know she's about to fire me, but I said, man, give me one second. I like to build with my clients. Mm -hmm. I right. said, young man, I asked you a question. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't like when you nod your head at me when I ask you a question. That's right. I said, can he talk? Right. And you know, you got to build that. You right, huh? Lack we losing it. We already losing. It's lack of communication. They don't know how to respond. They don't know how to hold an intellectual conversation with you. <laughs> they don't know how to do them things, right? My clients are in the comments saying, yep, she do be in your phone. <laughs> we want to give a shout out to Stomp from Northeast Groovers. What's up, Stomp? Yeah. <laughs> I do Stomp here. He said, yeah, she do be in the phone. That's too funny, man. We rock with Stomp. Yes, yeah, we Northeast for life. Northeast That's for life. Northeast yeah, Northeast I love Northeast Stomp. Life. He a big part of the Salon man. Rose family. Big man. Doug is a part of uh, our Hawthorne family Doug also. Is, and he's a, 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 a long standing Doug is member an owner of Northeast. Doug is an owner. Yeah, okay. So they, Northeast family always with us. Yeah, I'm definitely tied in with the go-go world. Most yeah, of the people in the go-go, they got some kind of hair going on, female or male. They normally getting in my chair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, um, what I love the most is um, interacting with the ladies. Like these, these ladies, these young ladies is powerful. And Miss Dion, you know, 
Miss Dion just she's she drives the car. Miss Dion drives the car for us, and I'm telling you, we. <laughs> I don't know where it would be without Miss Dion. Yeah, she sure enough drove this car because <laughs> when I talked to her, I told you I tried to make some moves right. and manure, and <laughs> she was very, she was just like a a quiet storm. Mm -hmm. She knew she was going to get the job done from mm -hmm. the break, mm -hmm. and I said what I had to say, and she just acted like she didn't even hear what I said. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Dion. I said what I had to say, and she said, okay. And she went on, and you see, we all here. <laughs> and, and we appreciate it, though, Miss Rowe. Like, we really appreciate you taking the time to allow us to come on your platform. Because one thing about us, no matter where we go in life, we're we, we, we going back to home base. We're not going to be that one. I know what it is to taste money. I know what it is. I've been there, done it. I know what it is, right? But what I had to learn is tasting love, real love, real genuine. That means much, you know. That means a lot to me. You know, because I made a lot of mistakes in my life. And that's why I feel like God has used me the way he used me to be around Tone and Shannon and the rest of the team. I learned mm. from them so much. Like, I embraced them so much. And I, I know they appreciate me, but I appreciate them more just because I'm learning as well and how they support me in this. You know what I'm saying? And how you supported me without even really knowing. Well, I did do a little bit of investigating. I did. No, I'm joking. No, really, though. And see, that's what it's about. You know, what you do, I deal with it. You know, but you like taking it to another level. And you best to believe this didn't fall on deaf ears for me. I'm going to be looking for y'all. I'm going to be supporting y'all and what you're doing. And I'm going to be definitely pushing these people because we I teach this in the shop. This is what I mm -hmm. teach. But you guys are in a position monetarily to make some things happen. And you know, that's my goal. And that's ownership. We we just teaching ownership. We, we want to show you how to buy the land. So when we say commercial, we just not building shopping centers. You know, we, we build homes as well as shopping centers. So every land we buy, we 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 are more than none building condos, homes on top of the businesses as well. I'm gonna give you some. I remember um, last year on New Year's, I was sitting in a um, in an office on New Year's Day, and I was signing leases. Mm -hmm. OK. And when I met with one of the guys, um, we was tired at that table. He and his dad, white guys, own um, one of the properties I was signing a lease for. And when we were having a conversation, you know, I had some idea to kind of see through the lease and things like that to make sure it was going to work in my favor. And, you know, we know it's not working in my favor at all because I'm leasing. But here, get you. here we are. And <clears throat> I remember he looked at me and he was so frustrated. Good guy. Good white guy. Mm -hmm. He said, ma'am, you're not going to be doing this long. He okay. said, I can tell you right now. He said, you're supposed to own. Amen. He was like, I don't know why you're signing this paper. Mm -hmm. He was frustrated. And it was interesting to me how simple it was. You could tell in his lifetime, he never had to sign a lease. Mm -hmm. It's French to him. And when people do it, they automatically looking at you like you're dumb. Like buying old friend shoes or something. You know, and I see so many people celebrating when they moving into a new apartment. You know, and I respect it, guys. Sometimes you gotta crawl before you Definitely. walk. You gotta get somewhere. Definitely. But like what they're talking about here tonight is what's the plan? Mm -hmm. What are you doing to move towards the generational wealth, to towards ownership? Yes. And it's and it, and it's and it's like to people look at us like, man, like it's easy or or we, we don't have a backstory or <laughs> or we wasn't you know young before like this wasn't easy like today we blood sweat and tears all day every day phone calls from everybody trying to meet everybody and talk to everybody because you know it's like it's difficult in our space right now because the momentum this thing got we didn't even see it come it's just everywhere now it's just going and going and going it's picking so much traction up so Everybody is spread it. Everybody is spread it because what it is, everybody is accountable. That's the beautiful thing. So we know when he go what he doing, he's bringing it home. When Dion had on her part, she's bringing it home. Everybody is bringing it back home. So when everything is built and done, it's so easy to already have it sold. Like we want our own black theater. We don't want to go to Bethesda Blue Alley no more. We don't want to do that no more. We're building that. You see what I'm saying? We building these things. So the infrastructure is coming back home. Our black restaurants, we're building them things. You know, our black amphitheater. We wanna we wanna make sure that we have 
Why do we have to go out of town to be successful? Hey, I'm going to Atlanta. I'm going to New York. Why? We can do that here. We're in the nation's capital. <clears throat> but the problem is, is no nothing accessible for us. So we're going to build it so you can stay home to put on your theater shows and your Black Anthem and all that. That's what we're building. They're not going to like that? That's mm -mm. <laughs> okay. We're willing to die for this. They ain't going to like that. I they ain't going to like that. <laughs> we big on the business too, but the underbelly of what we got going on is... This, this is really my brother. Right. You know what I'm saying? These are really my sisters. Like right. we really we, we we deal with each other on holidays. Like we don't just do business together. Like we this is really our family. It's, 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 we close knit. We're very tight. I just don't do too much. I think on the board went out the crowd. I don't do nothing. But and it's fine. big for all of us That's to have fine. all the information. information. Yes. That's a, another another staple in our in our community. That is a big deal right there. You know, a lot of times I know I've always had a real big niche for that. Don't hold nothing back from me. Mm -hmm. If we rolling, let's roll mm -hmm. because I'm going to pull it all out. There's no secret with my girls, anybody on my staff. I'm going to give you all I got. Mm -hmm. Whatever I think is going to make you some money or help you to be better. I'm not scared of you passing me. I ain't worried about it. Go ahead and do your thing. But I'm going to give you all I got. I don't like it when you sit under people's mentorship. And they withhold from you because they afraid of what you can't do. Mm -hmm. We can't really do nothing like that. You got your lane, you got yours, you got yours. And we put it together and it's a great thing. The thing is, it's a red flag. So when you see it, you should be trying to get away from it. Because you're only going to go as far as they let you go. That's toxicity. That's things that... Lord embody. have mercy. We embody that. We embody that growing up. And we talk about that too. That's why we got to be patient with our own people. Like we, even if you're black members can't change, even when you're business and you're not doing what you're supposed to do, we ain't getting rid of you. Don't think she's saying because you're not here, we're getting old. We're not doing that. We're coming back for you. But right now, let's take these 10 and put them in place because them 10 going to come back and get you. See, we can't. The, the mission is this. Build them 10 businesses. Let them 10 businesses come back and get you. Success builds success. That's what it is. See, that's creating bosses, right? That's how you create it. Like we're not afraid of your businesses doing whatever it's doing we want your business to do what it's supposed to do yes that's god getting the glory saying i use them to do this and now look what is happening that's all it is it's about god getting the glory this ain't lord about us. lord it's perspective <laughs> it's perspective you just got the right perspective and i think that's that's why this thing is going to do so well you got the right perspective i think perspective is everything you can see where this thing is going you had a vision you know what the end result is and i think on the hard days that's probably what keep you guys going mm. seven days a week seven, no days seven. off seven days. no days off we was literally at an event yesterday seven days, seven days a week i want to say something that was amazing to me that so i was in a promotion at one time and um we had a, a opportunity to meet a black guy that's a ticket seller Right, and I want to give a shout out to him. I want to make sure I, I always his name. Right there. What's his name? Kenny Atkinson. Kenny Atkinson. You know how you see Ticketmaster? He's right there with Ticketmaster. You just don't know it. Right. right. So his company is called Lime. Lime. Less is more entertainment. Less is more. So tick, do we feel like Ticketmaster is the the platinum of it? No, but it's lime as well. Please, so y'all. He sits please. at the table with Ticketmaster, only black broke ticket, only black ticket seller. He's sitting at the table with Ticketmaster. They like this together in America. Yeah. In America, not just so, in the air. And he's from here. And he's let's from shout here. it out. He's from Sir Some Quarter, y'all. Sir Some Quarter. He's from here. Listen to what this man is doing. When I tell you, you think everything is Ticketmaster, it's not. Ticketmaster just the staple of it. This guy's called Lime. Please, you can buy anything, any tickets, anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world, he could do this what Ticketmaster doing. Ticketmaster calls him to make things happen. All the football game shows on over overseas. What he had? Um, world Cup. He had World Cup. What? He had the World Cup tickets. The black not guy. Ticketmaster. He did the World Cup. So how do we find this guy? Lime. So he's Lime. doing Lime. Less is more. What? Lime, less is more events. So you guys heard it right there. So we y'all just heard it. 
So if you go on and look for your tickets and stuff like that, make sure you write that down. Run and get your pen and your paper, yes. put it in your notes. And if you don't believe us, pull up Ticketmaster prices and compare what Kenny gives you. Yes. The overall experience at that. It's not just the ticket, it's the experience, experience. versus what you're going to get from Ticketmaster. You set up the cool file for 20000 He gave you the same tickets for 8000 I'm just showing you black excellence. I'm just showing you what we are connected to. That's 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 what it's about is getting that information. He's connected to us. So we are pushing that out there. We don't have to go to Ticketmaster, y'all. They do not support, they don't even want him at the table. We're they not going to Ticketmaster. We're right. Not, we don't not, no they, they don't want us at the table, but he had to. Because that's how much volume he's moving. He create concepts for all the football teams. You don't even know it's him. You think it's a white man. And it's he's him. from here. And I can't stress DC. that enough. He's from D.C. Shout out to the coolest. All, all, all of us. <laughs> yes, yes. 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 We know that's two of y'all down and all yes. that, but we still rocking the show. All the concepts that the football teams come up when they come with the um, tailgating and all that, everything, how the tickets are sold, how they are priced, what do you think doing? Kenny. Kenny is doing this. Black wow. Man. Your black brother is doing this. You know, this is crazy to me because I'm, all, you know, I'm always trying to go to a show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I can't wait. Yes. To go get me some tickets, I'm gonna just go buy some tickets just because I might give some out of the salons this week. No, you don't gotta do that. Listen, we family. Just we don't hold that information in. You can sit at the table with Ken. He's reachable. He's he's with us. So you get to meet him. You he'll come on your show. You gonna he he can only tell the story. He's just incredible. Mm -hmm. When you see Ticketmaster, you see him. That's how they sit at the table. That is amazing. That excites me. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's black excellence. You've been real excited tonight. Yes, I have been. I'm a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. I'm a businesswoman, and I love mentoring black people on business, making money. I've always been like that. Always. That gets me excited, too. We just got to get the business struck. Don't focus on money, y'all. Let's do business. No, the money going to come. Yes. But I think most time, more than now, we chase money, right? That's the everyday the goal. Chase the money. Chase the money. Right? You're leaving too much crumbs, too much food on the plate. If you chase the business and let God overflow that cup, you're going to stand beside the person that God's going to give you that overflow abundantly. So that's when the wealth going to come. Like, I don't, we don't want, we're not, we're not rich. We're not looking for rich. We're, we're looking for wealthy, but we're not looking for wealthy with money. We're looking for wealthy with Christ. We, we're not looking for that, what they think we're looking for when we say we want to be wealthy. We want to continue to, to get his love. As long as we're getting it from him, we're going to get everything we need. Every, look, everybody don't get that. Yeah. Everybody, that, I'm telling you, you got darn. You know, you'll be taken care of when you're under that wing. You know, and a lot of people's perspective, you just spoke volumes right there. You probably surprised a lot of people with that. And for those in the back, he said he's looking for wealth from Christ. This is not his home. And that's a big piece to really realize. A lot of people running this race and they not even thinking about that. They not even getting up and saying, God, what is it that you're doing? Because he's really doing the work. When people say they are vessels, I wonder, do they really understand what's being said? That means it's not your plan. Mm -hmm. This is something that you called to do. You can't just get up every day and tick tock all day. You know, he, this wasn't his plan. This, listen, this what this was none of their plan. Listen. None of their plan. It was not. It was none of their. Plan. It wasn't even my plan. It, look how God just did this. I mean, it's beautiful to be here with my brothers and sisters. It's really a humbling experience because it's crazy how God does these things for us. And to why did I get on? Why did I get on your page to look for you? How I did have I find no you? idea. Incredible, right? I looked at one of y'all. I'm like, she's incredible. She needs to be on her own platform beside of Oprah. Like, that's what I see you at. Like, that's how everything, like, I, when I saw you, I'm like, she gone. Like, I was like, I can appreciate it. And I listen to how you did. I'm like, look at her. She's nothing but platinum to me. All glory be to God. Thank yes. you. Yes. But it's because I love the Lord. Amen. I work for the Lord. Amen. You know, I serve, yes. look, I serve down there with Tony Lee and them. Amen. 
That's what I do. I'm on the front line with them jokers. And we that's what it's about. You know, you say the God piece and you say the God piece and y'all can't believe it, but we rocking down already. We four minutes out. Wow. I told y'all it goes by so fast. I got your views with some information. Too. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what, guys? We're going to make sure you guys wrap this up strong. Whatever you guys want to get out. Viewers, get your pen and your paper, contact information, whatever you need to record. They about to give you guys some resources and ways to contact to get, co get connected. Yeah, so I would love to tell you guys how Hop On is giving back to its own sh initiative and to the community. So we hold our monthly Poor Man Shark Tank Vendor Fair. We hold that once a month. This is the way to get into the competition of owning your own storefront, vendor, uh, truck, food truck, or retail shelf space. So we hold it the first Saturday of every month. The next one is August 6th. It is a $75 non-refundable investment into your business future. You will send that to dollar sign hop on one. Once you send that in, you will come back. You will at King Shan on Instagram. Send me your full name your email, your phone number, and a picture of your logo, and you are in. In return, I will send you a business questionnaire, and you will explain about your current business structure. And that's what we use to see what Hop One could do for you. So the next one is August 6th from 1 to 6 p.m. And then we also have our first annual Hop One uniform backpack giveaway. So what we are doing, we're giving away 250 to 500 uniform sets, as well as 100 to 200 backpacks filled with school supplies, as well as a limited amount of kitty cuts and styles from our sponsor, Unique Looks. And this is our way of giving back to the community. We're looking for sponsors who would like to join $250 for a sponsor. We're also looking for vendors for that day, which is $25. And we have a lot of bosses around. I'm going to say this to you guys. We have a lot of bosses. I deal with a lot of bosses. So I just would love to see you guys be a sponsor and give back to y'all community. I heard that. Because we can't say why these celebrities don't never come back and reach out when we have business owners in our own community that could, that could sponsor. You know, so please give back to the community. Help out these parents that will need help with uniforms and everything. Our goal is $7,500 to reach. $250 will sponsor 10 kids in your community. And that's a lot. In your community, we ain't chasing oh, what's yes. going on in other countries. We talk about we talk right community. Here, wow. Fifty dollars sponsor ten kids. That means they get two uniforms, backpack, hair, and everything. Well, you guys heard it. If anybody, and did you guys have any more information to add to that while we wrapping down? I just want to say, I, um, we don't use the word pop up. We always use the word vendor fair. We're going to upgrade everything, and um, just so everybody knows, is we're not just giving you a platform to come sell your product i mean we are but you also get access to all of our experts people like jeremiah the top producer mm -hmm. um people like that, that that's just involved with us we have financial people we have a lot of experts that's going to be at these vendor fairs also and you will have access to those people and that information also so it's not just about selling your product when she says the investment it's a real investment Absolutely. And we hold it at our shopping center that we are developing, which is 2323 Shadyside Avenue. And I always say, even if y'all don't want to vend on August 6th, come out and see what we're about. Pop out, tap in. Come out and see that we ain't no joke out here. And you can see what we really try to do in the community. I and know, support I support said, black businesses, y'all. Yeah, we hosting live. Support black businesses. You don't have to go to the mall that day. You don't have to go to CVS that day. You don't have to go to McDonald's that day. I don't got Come to, to no 2323 Shadyside Avenue. We are featuring Pop and Potato. This is a feature for her. Now, we did Austin, which is Black Dragon, in May. So now we're featuring Papa Potato. I, listen, we love Papa Potato. Mm -hmm. My, you know, my team, they gonna be like, <laughs> where's she gonna be? Yeah. That girl is bad. Yeah, absolutely. Front, I ain't never said, had absolutely. no potato that big and good. We trying okay. to put her around the country. Thank yeah, you. Thank she you. is, and she is working hard. Yes, Thank she you. is. I can vouch. That wonderful, girl, wonderful, wonderful. That woman. girl is Glenisha. Yeah, <laughs> she is rolling. I mean, that girl, that's blood, sweat, and tears right there too. She is rolling. Mm -hmm. She's trying to deliver, and she's like she's hands on. Yeah. We'll call her and be like, "Are you coming with the potatoes?" And she be like, "Girl, I'm on my way. We almost there." And I mean, she running. Yes. She is rolling, and whatever she couldn't get during the day, she's taking them at her residence. <laughs> she like, "I'll meet you here. I'll drop them at your house." That's right. You guys, I cannot believe that we are wrapping down. You guys can count me in for a sponsor tonight, so I lead by example. Oh, you guys you. know y'all got me as a sponsor. Before y'all roll tonight, I'll make sure y'all get that. 
before y'all leave here tonight. It's my you. pleasure. And y'all can look for me. I'm definitely going to try. If I'm in town on August the 6th, if I'm not on a flight, please be there. I'm Ooh, in it. Okay. If I'm in town, I like that talk too. I like that talk too. All right, you guys. I just cannot express how much love I feel in the room, how much power I feel. I wish you guys the absolute best. And this will not be the last time we sit together after tonight. You know what, you guys? I want to thank you all for joining us for another episode of Let's Talk with Ro. Please like and share this. This was a lot of information tonight. Share it. Tell somebody to watch it. And you guys make sure you record those days. That's August 6th. And what's the address again? 2323 Shadyside Avenue, Suitland, Maryland. So August 6th and August 21st. And don't be discouraged. If you don't want to come down and vend, even if you don't have any money to sponsor, don't you be absent. You get right. your tails to the club that night. Make sure you get your tails there. All right, All right you guys. Y'all have a good night. See y'all next Thank week you. for another episode of Let's Talk with Bro.